All right. Tonight we have Kate Baxter of BBNZ, who's a referee for a long time in Wellington. Uh, I would like to thank you for joining us tonight. Okay. So I guess the, when people think about basketball and referees in Wellington, your name pops up because you've been doing it for quite a while. So I would like to go to where it all started. When you were young, do, was basketball part of your life? Did basketball have an influence in your life or did any other sport lead to basketball? Like, how did you get into the sport itself? Um, so I went to a small school mm -hmm. um, and you played everything. Okay. In order to get teams, you played everything. So year 10, probably, they started a, year, a basketball team. Mm -hmm. And so it was like, oh, yeah, I'll be a part of it. And as part of it, you had to referee afterwards. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah. So you just learned to do everything. Mm -hmm. Is that where your love of basketball started? Yeah. Yeah, yeah probably. Mm. And is that where your love of referee started as well, or did it come later? No, that came later. Okay. That came later. So, you know, I was the reluctant teenager walking up and down the court with a whistle in my mouth and never blowing it. You know, <laughs> the you know, kind of thing you get when you ask teenagers to referee. Mm -hmm. um, and then I started playing seriously, started getting frustrated with referees. Um, a very senior referee around Wellington when I was still you know, playing quite young, mm -hmm. told me that if I was going to perform like that on a court that I really should pick up a whistle and be serious about blowing a whistle as well. Okay. So I learned to referee. Mm -hmm. And what what drew, what drew draws you to refereeing? Like, especially at, at a young age? Um, because it's, it's a tough job. It's a tough job. Yeah. Um, it's the game that you do that you know you've done a good job. Mm -hmm. It's the feedback you get from players, it's the feedback you get from coaches, but it's that feeling inside when you actually, and it sounds really good when you actually think, I'm enjoying this. Mm -hmm. And it's because you, you feel like it's under control, you feel like you know what you're doing, and everyone's just playing. Okay. What would you say is the most common misconception of being a referee that non-referees have of, of an official? Yeah. Um, probably that we're a little bit power hungry, that we like to insert ourselves into a game. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, probably that, and that we think we know it all. Okay. How do you deal with players that think they know the rules when in actuality they don't? Because your, your specialty is knowing the rules inside out. Yep. And players, you know, I, I've been a player and um, you know, and then when I started learning to be a referee for a little bit, when you know you saw me as several, well, I think earlier this decade, it's a totally different game yep. because well, as a player you just know the basics and you know some of the you know some of the things that are called often, but you don't know the ins and outs, you don't know the interpretation. So how do you deal with players who think they know the rules when in actuality they're, they're they don't know? Um, the smart players, the ones that want to get better, will learn. So if you take the time to tell them, so if they think that they, they think you know, the rule's right, and then you, you take the time to talk to them and explain to them why you're calling what you're calling, the smart players will react and they learn. And they're the ones that are really fun to work with and really good to work with. Um, there are some players that are always going to think they're right, um, the same as there's some referees that are always going to think they're right. Um, but there are, you know, the ones that the players that, that are nice to interact with are the ones that are actually happy to listen. What's the hardest part of being a ref, in your, in your opinion? Dealing, actually, dealing with people. Um, because what you need to what happens is, you know, you're, they're playing a game. They're they've got adrenaline running through their brains. They're all hyped up. They, you know, there's all this going on, and then you're trying to, and nine times out of ten you are as well, particularly in a big game. Mm -hmm. You know, you're hyped up, and it's, you know, so someone yells at you, and you have to be really careful that you don't yell back. You know, so it's controlling yourself, and con and actually dealing with what's going on, not so much what's going on with the game, but what's going on with the people in the game. How how important of an aspect? is the mental and social interactions of being a referee. With players or with other referees? Either, both, either. Um, 
it, it's always nice to have other referees to sound off at. Mm -hmm. You know, it's all part of being of professionalism. You know, the last thing you want to be doing is standing yelling at a player on the court. But it's all very, it's really easy to come and find another referee and sound off at them. Mm -hmm. um, I probably learn more about calling a game from players than I have from other referees. Mm -hmm. um, probably when I was starting, um, the very senior players, what, you know, if you go and sit and talk to them and find out what affects them and what what annoys them in a game, what they what they can play through and what they can't, um, and they and they know they know what you know, and it's not the players telling you what to call; it's you listening to everyone that's involved in the game. Okay. You know, obviously the senior referees, when you're learning to referee, will tell you a lot as well, but the players will too. Would you say you, even with senior referees, when you're starting out, do you still learn more from the players than you would a senior referee? Or? I did. Yeah? Um, okay. I think because as a player, like, I instinctively knew how to, how to referee post-play, because okay. that's where I played. So I knew how to referee there. What's going on between free throw line and free throw line? I never was a guard. I never carried the ball. So I have no idea what affects guards. Mm -hmm. I know what to look for. but. It's what to leave and what to call, yeah. and it's those judgment calls. And you know, there's some very, there's some very experienced guards around Wellington that actually were quite happy to talk to me about what, what affected them and what didn't. Does being a former player have an advantage, a big advantage, to being a referee if they have that background than a non-player? I think so. Yeah? You tend to be able to recognise the plays that the that. That are being run, so which means you can almost anticipate where the action is next, okay. and you have a bit of an understanding of what the players are trying to do. Mm -hmm. But in saying that, I've seen some amazing referees that have never played. Interesting. Yeah. Who would you say is harder to deal with, players, coaches, or parents? Now? Yeah. Parents. Parents. When I first started, mm -hmm. coaches. Can you, tell, yep. can you tell me the difference? So when I first started, there were some very, very vocal coaches mm -hmm. around Wellington, oh, uh, around the country. There was the likes of Don, John DeVig and Curtis Wharton and Kenny Stone, and those guys were really loud. We weren't used to American voices down here. We weren't used to really loud American vo voices. Steve McKean <laughs> was another one. They were they weren't a nightmare, but they were they were intimidating, and they were as a as a young referee, they were intimidating. Now, it may be that I've got older and people that yell and scream don't actually intimidate me as much, but now it's the parents. It, and it's the impact the parents have on their kids. So you've got this, this group of kids coming through now that are almost, um, almost entitled and they think they know it better than anyone else and they watch an awful lot of NBA and they think they can do all you know, do all that, yeah. and it, I don't know, I mean, they're, they're incredibly talented, and the game's amazing now, mm -hmm. but we need to do something about the behaviour on the court and off the court. That's a, that's a good point that, um, to bring up, because, you know, I grew up watching NBA since the 80s, and I played a lot of American basketball, and the difference I see, maybe in the last four or five years in the NBA is, the NBA officials allow players to yap and mm. complain and yep. demonstratively make actions, especially like you watch Draymond Green. Yeah. Every game, nine or ten times, he's throwing the, well, maybe not throwing the ball, but setting the ball down, visibly yeah. complaining. And NBA officials allow that, um, most likely because Adam Silver, the, the new NBA commissioner, doesn't want to have the stars thrown out. Yeah. But I just wonder how much does that impact young players who watch NBA that think that they can yap towards the referee? And do you see more of that happening in the youths in New Zealand? Yeah, you yeah? do, and they all have it. Every call you make now, there is a comment, okay. and we even see it in you know local leagues. Every call you make, someone has to comment on because that's what they see. Yeah. Mm. How do you change that? Don't know. If you go to Australia and referee, mm -hmm. no one says boo. Well, at least the times I've been there, and even when the Australian teams come here. They, so Australia must have it right. I don't know how, and I don't know what they do because I haven't been there for a long time. You know, I haven't refereed there for a long time. Mm -hmm. But we need, yeah, we have to stop it, and I'm not sure how we stop it. Because mm -hmm. we can do all the work we want to do locally, 
but if they see it happening in even in our NBL and in the NBA okay, and even the Australian League, they're just going to keep doing it. Um, you mentioned American coaches, and um, you know, me being American, you've coached, uh, not coached, but you've refereed me a few times in, in midweek leagues, and you know I can be a little vocal. Is there a big difference between American players, Kiwi players, Australian, Europeans that you find, or are they all pretty much the same? It's just the level of skill, I think. Oh yeah? Okay. Um, or, so, most, like, take away this, this, the, you know, like, under 25s, mm -hmm. right? Above that, the skill level's quite different, I think. Um, you know, the Amer American players, our New Zealand systems haven't been, have been good, but mm -hmm. they're getting better. Okay. They're getting, and in the last 10 years, they've really improved and got better. Um, but the American systems have been good for years and years and years. So players and adults that have come through those systems, even that have never played at the high level, have just played with local, you know, local ball and things, they've had those systems that come through, whereas we only get really getting them now. Okay. And we're only actually seeing the, what I think we are. Okay. How do you feel about the referee situation in New Zealand and in Wellington? Um, is it where you'd like to see where it's at, or do you think it needs a lot of improvement? Or um, I think we need a lot of improvement. I mm -hmm. think we need to do a lot of work with our coaches, mm -hmm. um, with our coaches and our players, because we're training kids. They go out and they referee half a dozen games or so, and they go, I don't want to do this anymore, because they get abused. Mm -hmm. And they also get left almost out in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. So they go out and they're refereeing in college gyms and there's no one there. There's no one there watching them because there aren't enough, there aren't enough um, referee mentors or trainers to actually be out in every school gym. Mm -hmm. And some schools are doing an incredible job um, and some schools are going, great, here you are, have a whistle, go referee. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so it's, yeah. Is that something you see often? The young referees quitting because yeah. They don't have the support because they don't have the support, and they and the problem is we don't have enough referees, so we throw them in the deep end. Mm -hmm. So we put them into games that they're not ready for because we don't have anyone else. What is the biggest challenge to developing and maintaining refs in New Zealand? Um, I think it's probably more mentors, more trainers, but. We don't have we don't have the people to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we lose a lot of referees. We lose a lot of referees that have been refereeing. We lose them when they're when they're quite young. We lose them when they get a bit older because they start to have kids and have other yeah. other you know other um, like commitments. Yeah, commitments, um, obligations, and then you know sometimes they come back, sometimes they don't. Mm. You know, and it's really hard to referee when you've got little kids. Yeah. Yeah. What, what kind of advice would you give a young person who's looking to go into the referee industry here in New Zealand? I would actually say there's a lot, the pathways are getting better. Mm -hmm. um, the fact that New Zealand is now part of, of um, Asia rather than just New Zealand and Australia, mm -hmm. there's a lot more pathways. You look at how many referees we've now got that are going to under 15s, under 17s, international tournaments. Um, so the pathways are much better. The pathways for referees are as good now as the pathways for players. And it didn't used to be that way. What are common mistakes that young reps make? Um, I think they probably, and it's really hard to do, 90% of refereeing is confidence. Mm -hmm. Now if you look like you know what you're talking about, most of the time you get left alone. Um, which is really hard when you first start because you don't know what you yeah. what you you don't know if you're right you don't know if you're wrong. My advice would be if you think it's a foul it's a foul and call it mm -hmm. and just call it strong and just call it strong call it you know sound assertive sound like you know what you're doing they'll leave you alone. Is there a fine line between confidence and arrogance when you're refereeing? Yes, <laughs> there is a very fine line, and it has to do with the way you deal with the, with the players. You know, there's a difference between blowing the whistle and going, I know what I'm talking about, and blowing the whistle and going, come on, take me on. And there is a very fine line there. You see a lot of that in, in refereeing, where they're aggressive towards the players or challenging them? Somet sometimes. Yeah. How do you see the future 
of the referee industry in New Zealand? Um, I think they're becoming, people are valuing referees more. The best thing that secondary school council did was say that every school has to take a referee mm -hmm. to, to tournament. Okay. Because it means that the schools now go, we need referees. And they don't rely on the old hands that are wandering around to, mm -hmm. to go. And that's really good because we've got lots of young referees coming through. Um, and I actually think the players need to learn to referee. You do you, know, are you players usually resistant to doing that? The problem is, I think, is that there's so much time commitment on these kids. Mm -hmm. But every most other sports, they have to referee. So you, know, if you, go, you take netball for an example. The netball, you always referee after your game. And yeah, the referee may be rubbish, but people just take it. You know, they just accept the fact that these aren't qualified referees, these are kids that are refereeing after their games and they deal with it. Handball you have to referee after your games. Okay. Most games you do, most sports you do, you, basketball's really different in the fact and unique in the fact that usually most associations can provide two referees on every game. Okay. Are there enough referees to do 3PL in Wellington at the moment or is it is there a shortage of referees that it's really hard to get that system or is it even utilized much in New Zealand? We're getting to the stage where under 19s they had 3PO this year, mm -hmm. I think for the first time. So under 19s, under 23s, secondary school nationals, we, they do it from quarterfinals. Mm -hmm. um, Women's National League and Men's National League, they do 3PO. That's, pro that's probably the levels that need it. Mm -hmm. um, and we're getting more and more and more referees that can do it. So as we build up the stock of referees and as the junior referees get more experience and the intermediate referees get more experience, mm -hmm. we get more and more that can do it, which means we can run it. Okay. Is there a, a huge difference between running a 2PO two, and 3PO for games? Or is there some, something a referee who's used to doing two, uh, two person can easily pick up? Yeah, you need to have your 2PO two, your two POs really solid mm -hmm. because if you're not careful, if you start running 3, it can mess with your 2. So you okay. need to have your 2PO really solid. You, and the other problem is that if you're not careful, you become so, when you're first learning it, you get so worried about your mechanics, you forget to referee. <laughs> so you need to, if you're teaching someone, you need to make sure you've got two referees with them so that if you lose them, you can still referee the game. Because okay. the, the point is the whole object of the exercise is to you know, look after the game and yeah. to manage the game and control it. Uh, how often do you referee now? Is it on and off or do you referee quite a lot no, during the week? A couple of times a week. Couple of times a week? Mm -hmm. How much longer do you see yourself refereeing? Oh, <laughs> oh, I don't know. I, would, I keep trying to give up. <laughs> but why? Do you, not, do you still enjoy it? I enjoy it. Mm -hmm. I just can't like there are some games I know I can't keep up with. It's an age yeah. thing, yeah. you know. As much as I hate to admit it, it's <laughs> an age thing. And also, you need to walk away to create the gap. Okay. So if we keep refereeing, so if the senior referees or the ones of us that have been there for a long time keep refereeing, there's nowhere for the other, for the others to come up to. Okay. There's no space, you know. And you know the problem is you walk into a gym and if a coach sees me, they go, "Oh great, you're going to do my game." as opposed to, no, I'm actually coming here to watch junior referees. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's great. And you, you're now a trainer and a yep. mentor at, for BBNZ, right? Yeah. And do you, is that something you want to do even after you stop refereeing? Yes. Yeah? Yeah. So that's sort of where, I'm, where I think that I probably can add more value. Okay. That's great. Well, thank you very much for your time tonight. Um, it's been a great pleasure talking with you tonight, and we'll see you on the courts cool. during Alpha.